real quick, I just, um, I've had a couple of potty training conversations already this week. And so I wanted to just give some feedback because we're potty training Hans here. He came in and he's not potty trained. Um, and so uh, I think the first thing is you're gonna have accidents, right? You're gonna have a few accidents while you figure it out. Um, so we have had a few accidents with Hans already um, while we're getting him caught up to speed and while we're sort of figuring him out. But uh, potty training to me, okay, to me, it's a two-step process. You first have to teach the dog where to go to the potty and then you need to teach him how to hold on to themselves for a longer period of time, right? So the first one is just building the same habit of this is where you go, this is where you go, this is where you go, and just kind of taking them out to the same spot that you want them to go. The second one is gonna be sort of limited to maybe the dog's age, right? Like a, a three-month-old puppy is only gonna be able to hold it for so long, right? So, um, most dogs are, are, well, Hans is not one of these dogs in terms of he's okay with kind of being in his own pee. Um, so we really need to limit the water intake. Okay, so when you're teaching your dog to hold on to themselves for a longer period of time, we don't want to be constantly giving them water or free access to water because then it's just going to go against everything that you're trying to develop, right? It's actually, it's going to make it much more difficult. So don't do free access to water, right? So we, I'll, I, what I want to do is I want to let them pee and then give them water. So I know that they're empty, and then now they drink water, and then I know that I'll need to take them out X amount of time. The fastest way to potty train is to crate train, or use some type of confinement training. That's the fastest way. Why? Well, because dogs are, you know, again, usually they're very clean animals. They don't want to have an accident where they eat or where they sleep. So if you can teach them that, you eat their, that they eat their food in their crate, they sleep in their crate, they chew their bone and take their naps in their crate, then that becomes their room. And so they'll hopefully learn to respect that smaller space and hold on to themselves until you take them out. Right, so another reason why uh, we don't want to—I don't—we we don't want to do any like free feeding. Okay, so free feeding would be very similar to the water intake, like f free access to water. Um, you, we need to know when when our dogs or our puppies ate their food, so we know when to take them out. Okay, so if it's just free feeding all day, then you're not going to really know when they're going to need to go because they've just been eating all day long. Right, so we want to get them on a schedule. So first things first is make sure that you're feeding them in their crate. Okay. We want to go with that natural instinct for them to um, hold on to themselves in the area that they eat and they sleep in. Okay, so if you're feeding the dog in the kitchen and then wondering why the dog is having accidents around the house, it's just multiple things are happening. It's just too much freedom for a dog that doesn't understand, okay? And sure, it's like they, most of the time for people who feed their dog in the kitchen, the dog never has an accident in the kitchen. The dog will have an accident in a room that they don't spend a lot of time in. So. We want to shrink down the environment first, and really the idea should be teach your, teach your dog to respect the small space first, meaning you know their crate or a small confined area, and then gradually let them have access to the rest of the house as they, you know, have, again, have learned to respect the small space first. So, um, so continue to take them out to the same area while we are working on the crating, eating in the crate, and limiting the water intake. Obviously, we're making sure that they get enough water, but not just drinking and drinking and drinking when they don't know how to hold on to themselves, right? So, um, uh, a lot of the, 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 the feedback that I'm given for, from, you know, people trying to potty train is just like, hey, well, we constantly, we're taking the dog out all the time, you know, and the dog's not going, and we stand there for 20 minutes, and yada, yada, and then we come back inside, and it goes, and it goes inside, like it goes on the rug. Right, so again, here was the idea that if you take them outside and they don't go, or they just lay down, or it's been a few minutes, whatever it is, when you go back inside, that's where you want to put them in the crate. So don't give them the access to, you know, go to a room, go on the rug, go on the carpet, whatever it is. Put them back in their crate for a few minutes, and then take them back outside to try again. So teach them that the, the idea is, you know, you kind of missed your opportunity to go potty, and you're going to have to go back inside and hold it for a few minutes, and then try again, right? And so you keep doing this back and forth until finally they go, right? And once they go, now they can come back inside and have some freedom. And so that's the process. And then you're gonna have to do that over and over and over and over for a long time to build the habit, right? Potty training is habit formation, learning to hold on to yourself until we take you out. So that's really my goal is that our dogs will hold on to themselves until we take them out. Okay, and so through this process, you know, your dog might start letting you know 
um, that they need to go. They might bark, they might whine. And that's really what you're looking for by getting them to hold on to themselves in their crate or their confined area. So if you constantly just take your dog out, just randomly thinking that they need to go, they're never gonna develop that ability to sort of let you know, hey, I need to go. Because they don't know, or because you haven't, again, sort of required them to hold on to themselves and then they're like, hey, you're making me hold on to myself, so somehow I have to get your attention and let you know like something's going on, right? So this takes, this, this, uh, takes patience and it takes a lot of consistency and it takes time.